folks, uh, Miguel Dorati back here on the MMA Museum podcast, and uh, we are on another one of our classic fight review segment, and uh, I'm joined by Todd Atkins, and uh, we are going to look back at a classic fight, going to go back to about 2004, so it's about 20 years old, and uh, this one's got a little bit of a Hawaii flavor, I'm going to let Todd introduce it, because uh, it was his choice, uh, it's a great fight. And, uh, you know, he's got the Hawaiian, um, the background for it. So uh, I'm going to let him tell, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, I think I can get a little bit in depth to it. TJ Thompson, uh, you know, this was in uh, Shudo Hawaii is what it was called. But it was a partnership that TJ had done with the Shudo organization. And I I tell people um, on Oahu because of this uh, video store, which is called Video Systems, it was across from uh, – the Blaisdell Arena. It was a Japanese owned video store. And they acquired a lot of uh of these events that happened in Japan. And uh, you know, they'd have them on VHS. It was all VHS back then. And a lot of the people in the MMA circles or jujitsu circles all went there. So I think our exposure on Oahu was more to the Japanese events than more people realize. You know, we were watching shooto events, pride events, things like that more than as much or more than the UFC. So TJ Thompson as well, you know, he had <clears throat> kind of gotten exposure to Shudo probably through that. I don't know if it was through video systems as well, but he had, he was a big fan of Shudo. He felt it was, and I agree with him at that time, maybe one of the better organizations that, you know, wasn't a major, you know, UFC or pride, but yeah, they how had the it best, was run. They had the best fighters. Yeah. And they, yeah. They had a tremendous talent back then. And, uh, you know, now it's more of a, I'd say, Japanese promotion, kind of, for whatever reason. But the UFC probably had something to do with that. You know, the the increase of events in the UFC might have had something to do with that. But <clears throat> this is one of those fights TJ decided to work with Shudo to do the fight in on Oahu at a Blaisdell Center. And Stephen Pauling, who uh, Jens Pulver's fighting here, you know, he had a, a real... Uh, strong reputation as a great puncher. And uh, he was doing pretty well in, in Shuto also. He had some good wins in Shuto. So these two guys matched up. And uh, I think, uh, you know, in the fight, you're going to kind of see a situation where this is a fight that ended a guy's career in the case of Pauling. And someone who gets an injury to his eye socket. Um, this is something where you can see kind of in real time something that happened that maybe people weren't necessarily used to because the doctor came in and I don't think he caught it because he let him continue to fight. But you can yeah. see from his reaction, and we'll talk about that, um, that he knew something was up. He didn't react like someone who normally would have got hit in the eye. Yeah, and it's a shame, too, because um, if you look at his, his fight record, his fight record comes up on Sure Dog as about as something like 11 and 7. So, like, off the top of your, you know, at first glance kind of thing, it's not the kind of thing that's super impressive. But if you actually get into, like, he lost to Kid Yamamoto, Pequeno Nogueira. He lost to the absolute best fighters of that era. And, uh, you know, he could put up a fight with anybody. I think uh, we'll go 3-2-1, 1-2-3 here in a minute. Pauling actually the was the Pauling was the first guy to beat Kid Yamamoto. He, Kid Yamamoto shot in on him, and he threw a knee that cut him. Yeah. And yeah, they, we, they called and, the uh, fight. They, they fought a couple of times. And um, he also rematched. He had rematches with some of the best guys, and and this is UFC champion Jens Pulver heading out to the island to, you know, he's trying to expand his wings. The UFC is not keeping him busy enough. The UFC is not making enough money. Um, at this point, uh, this was That's a viable good. option. So um, we're gonna watch Stephen Pauling versus uh, Jens Pulver, and this fight went down on July 9th, two thousand four. We'll do the three, two, one, and press play. And uh, right off the bat, we're looking at the Japanese lettering. You got the Japanese translation of Jens on the interview. So we're looking at uh, a Japanese version of the, this is maybe what aired on TV or at least what aired on the DVDs uh, that you're talking about, the Japanese uh, DVDs that were there. I, I've been to Japan many times and uh one of the best things to do over there that we love to do was to go raid the dvd and, and vhs stores for fight tapes 
and come back mm -hmm. with you know as many of them as possible. There's, there's some of these tapes in, in in those stores in Japan sold for up to a hundred dollars. You know they have a different economy and stuff. But they, it was wasn't cheap to get them, but you know right. labor of love kind of thing. And uh, we're in the ring, we're, and uh, Jen's kind of waving at the crowd. They touch gloves. Right off the bat, you can see Pauling's a, a stud. He's an athlete. Throws the first kick there. You didn't happen to go to the other. This was in Oahu. Were you at this fight? I think I was living in Japan at the time of this fight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was 2004. I was in Japan. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting here. So the Japanese obviously trying to nurture a, a league in the United States. Can't say they weren't getting top talent, you know, with Pulver. Um, Pulver wasn't afraid to lay it on the line. He went on, on some of the smaller shows, uh, you know, obviously won more than his share. You know, he, he, he's a champion. But he did take some losses on some of those shows every once in a while and, and you know, kept bouncing back, um, not afraid uh, to lay it on the line and fight tough guys. And as you said, Pauling was a guy with a reputation. Most of the Hawaiian guys, they know how to box. You know what mm. I mean? Um, that was the, the, you know, you had Ross and Gracie there and there was some groundwork, but, um, you know, uh, from mm, Ronald America. John and, and, and guys like along those lines, you could see, and, and there you're talking about a weird reaction, right? Right. That's where it happened. You know, you can tell he's not reacting like somebody who just only got hit in the eye. You know, he you can tell he's a little like so he could tell he's a little surprised by something. So now with a with a broken eye socket to end of his career, early in round one, this guy keeps fighting. He's taking shots to the face again. <laughs> um, you know, Jens is kind of a relentless guy, and 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 in the ring, is isn't going to soften up or anything. He's throwing knees at him, and Pauling is still hanging in the fight. I you know. And for people who aren't familiar with Shuto, they had a standing eight count. So when Paul got dropped, he got a yeah. standing eight count. Yeah, so. and that's what kind of like it, boxing. Yeah, and that was an eight count that he took there, and that's what the unusual reaction was. He had a couple minutes there. There was no doctor check or anything like that. I wonder if a doctor check had, would have picked up on the break. You know, I don't know. The, that's a very tough injury. I. I you know, a lot of the times it gets picked up after after the fight, uh, you know, that they don't recognize it right as it's going on in the fight. And, you know, it's only after they get home with the injury that uh, they they realize what was going on there. And, you know, I think the reason a lot of guys um, from Hawaii know how to box is uh, there are a lot of these uh, PAL Association boxing gyms there that kids don't have to pay to train at. Okay. So a lot of them, uh, you know, grow up training in these, especially kids who grew up in uh, like the projects. There's yeah. usually, you know, and Max Holloway, some we just saw at UFC 300. He still boxed at Y Night Boxing Gym. So, yeah. you know, he grew up boxing there and he still goes there to spar. And so these these guys get a lot of work in the traditional boxing at a young age, you know. And I trained at one of those in Palolo, in uh near the Palolo Valley Homes. So there were tons of young kids training there and they didn't pay a dime to train there. And the referee called the timeout there. And that, it looks like uh, actually, I, that doesn't look like one of the Hawaiian refs, is it? Uh, you think Shudo no, sent uh, their referee over, right? That's Suzuki. Okay. They had Suzuki and Ogata were the two refs from Shuto. That's Suzuki there. They both, they always both worked cards. So I think Ogata probably worked to do, you know, some other fights on this card. No, for they sure. Switch uh, they switch but off. what's interesting is that Shudo was uh, investing in sending their refs over, you know, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, for a smaller group is, a, you know, a flight from Japan is a flight from Japan. So they, they were putting a lot into into this. And again, for a top rated fight like this, you can't really uh, uh, knock them, you know. I mean, th th this is a UFC level fight. You know, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the ring, by the way. I, I do like fights in a ring much better than fights in a octagon um, or a cage. You know, uh, the bottom line is, is uh, unless you're sitting right at ringside, the uh, the cage is obstructed view. Uh, that's, you know, that's number one. Um, and, uh, you know, more reasoning is uh, in the UFC, it's, it's this point you had the tendency on the wrestler's part. If they got you down, 
you actually literally see uh, Jens Pulver's teammate, Matt Hughes, was famous for it, where he would take the guy down maybe in the middle of the ring of uh, the octagon and crawl to the fence so he could press him up against the fence. And uh, all that's avoided in the, in the court, you know, in the ring. It has his bugaboos right. like, you know, being stuck in the corner and, and that sort of thing and maybe falling out of the ring and things. But uh, I prefer that uh, action to uh, to to the cage. And I think ring uh, also, it just looks a little more classy, you know. Um, and I think Shudo was right along the lines of that. And that's why uh, you saw some Shudo early, early before 1993 in cages and in rings with uh, like netting at the bottom and things as they tried out a few different options. But they eventually settled on the on the boxing ring or the boxing style ring for their matches here. I, I, you know, Jens wasn't much of a, a ground fighter. He was a wrestler in college and stuff, but he liked to duke it out. And in Pauling, he's got a, a willing competitor. And uh, so far, they spent the whole fight on their feet. And we're in the second round here. Um, Pauling already, you know, um, received the injury that that ends his career, and he's still still fighting hard. He's still throwing with a lot of uh, a lot of punches. Uh, you know, a, a lot of heat on those punches. So uh, a real competitor here. Uh, Pulver looks to be chill, business as usual. He's got, you know, that normal Jens Pulver body motion and, and, and things like that. Uh, but he's, he's got a guy who's taking his punches pretty good, too, you know. Well, what's the referee call the timeout for here? Now, this is where they look at his eye. And the, the doctor comes in, and he doesn't he doesn't catch it, you know what I mean? He just kind of feels okay. on his eye, feels it's swollen, it's, but he it, doesn't realize the damage. Yeah, I've heard people that have that injury. They they could talk about like it almost being crunchy. Yep. Uh, but with the swelling that Pauling has, that may have tightened up and and, and may have avoided detection of it. Uh, he was also cleaning up a little bit of blood and things like that. Not enough blood to stop the fight. It's a cut that's under the eye, right? So it's not going to have struck view. So he, uh, you, you know. I hate it when the ref, uh, when the doctors don't get their job done correctly, and and you know we never saw Pauling again, which is a disappointment. Um, I think you could see the guy was definitely a viable athlete, um, but you could almost for not forgive the doctor, but you could almost understand how he would miss it. So you know you're you're in there, you've got a limited amount of time, you're trying to get the fight started again. Pauling was probably telling him, "Yeah, I'm good to go," you know. Um, most fighters, that's the rhetoric you get from them when they're injured. So, yeah, I want to keep going. And and uh, on top of that, if it was a Japanese doctor, there may have even been a uh, a language barrier. They haven't. No, really it, it was a doctor that TJ had. Okay. Yeah. They they don't have. Uh, you know, they haven't ventured to the ground yet. They, Pulver. There's no really... ground in this fight at all. Yeah, no, I, it's a boxing I, 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 match. It's a boxing match with, with gloves on. That's basically it. And and Pulver really with the MMA at, gloves. At this point, if you're a judge, I think you got to be seeing it Pulver's way. Even though you know Pauling is a good boxer and he's throwing big punches and stuff, he, he's never really rattled Pulver yet. Um, Pulver continues to come forward. Um, you don't know if that's because you know Pauling's having trouble seeing. Uh, maybe it would have been different if the first punch hadn't hurt him, but. Um, and he's holding his own, but he is seating ground and backing up a little bit. None of that looks terrific for the judges. So at this point, I think you got uh, Pulver probably comfortably ahead uh, on his way to winning uh, his second round here. It's you know, fight, and this though. was, you know, for people who don't realize it, this was a big win for Pulver, really, because <laughs> Pauling was no slouch, you know, and uh, no, for people, sure. people in the industry back then knew that how dangerous he was. So this is sure. very impressive wins for Pulver. You know, TJ had a good, you know, I mentioned Ronald John was another another one of those guys. There were a few guys that uh, TJ pinpointed guys that could compete on a world level. You know, and uh, Pauling is certainly one of them. Here he is in there against the UFC champion. Um, physically, he looks like a machine, you know. Um, right. And, uh you, you know, you could put him in there. They had already put him in against the very best that Shudo had. And uh, they knew he could hang. 
So, um, you know, with Pulver, they, they're probably hoping to steal a win. Um, and, uh, you know, falling again, they, they shake hands. They're in a competitive fight, and they're appreciating each other's talent. They, mm -hmm. uh, as they go to the corner there, um, they're, oh, they're pressing on that injury, too. Which yeah. is probably, it's yeah. not a... You know, I mean, you got adrenaline shooting and Pauling's a, a tough guy and stuff. The, the fighters hug going into the final round. So you, you can definitely say respect has been earned. And we'll see how this one uh, concludes here because Pauling's are starting to hold his face again. I don't know if they maybe clashed heads there or something, but and there, those interchanges are rough. You know, they're throwing heavy, heavy leather, and you know nobody's really mindful of their heads. It looked like Jens may have clipped Pauling on the chin on the way out with with the back of his head as well. You know, you, you don't know. You know, th those exchanges can always be volatile. You know, you don't know who's hurt or who's not banged up with, when they come together real close like that, but definitely, definitely a fight in 2004 that was, you know, probably top 10, top five guys, you know, mm. over a top three guy in the weight class, you know, if, if not the best at the time. And Pauling may not have been rated by everybody, but maybe should have been, you know, you could tell talent wise. And, and, and you always kind of wonder now, now with retrospect, you know, what if he hadn't gotten hurt and his eye wasn't messed up? You know, he's probably has a little bit of effective vision, et cetera, et cetera. How would this fight have gone, you know? Um, Jens, for all his fantastic uh, skills and ability, you know, Jens could be caught and dropped. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll never know. We'll never know. And uh, Boom, there it is, you know. And... Yeah. He, he, he caught him. And again, you, you wonder if maybe his vision was a little bit affected. Right. Um, you know, he didn't see that punch coming or... Or, or what the deal was, um, you know, maybe it was just tired and Jen, Jens did the right thing. Jens didn't escape unscathed. He looked like he may have hurt yeah. himself uh, with the foot. Pauling maybe. had some strong kicks on his leg. Oh, that too. Know. Yeah, that for sure too. He could be, yeah. you know, it might not be a foot. It might be the thigh that's a, a little banged up at this point. And, uh, you know, Jens didn't show it during the fight. That's what a champion does. But afterwards he was like, man, that hurt, those leg kicks hurt. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because Pauling, was good not only with the hands, but he was good with the feet throughout the fight. And uh, my hat's off to Stephen Pauling. You know, it's a shame we never saw him again. Um, hopefully, you know, he, he took care of himself and took care of his eye, made the right decision for himself. So there's no begrudging that. But uh, the sport may have been robbed of a top-notch athlete there. So good, good stuff. Definitely good stuff there. Yeah, and, you know, I was just thinking about Max Holloway, you know, because we talked about that yesterday. There were a lot of really tough guys that came out of way, and this is another tip to Max and BJ Penn. Max and BJ were the ones who emerged the furthest. I, I mean, yeah. maybe even Max has surpassed BJ now. I don't know. I would say maybe. But, yeah. you know, all these guys, there was only a couple that really, and so it's just a tribute to Max. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, uh, my hat's off. I mess with Ronald Jun, and yeah. uh, Ron Great Jun fighter. is a guy I, I believe his son is um, a standout on the Bellator roster at this point, or at least uh, fought on Bellator and was, you know, uh, a lot of them. No, no, that was his nephew, Kamaka. Okay, no, no, no. They, John, they... John has a daughter, Brianne, that, that was fighting for professionally. But... No, there's a, there's a Ronald Jun. I'm, I'm... Could it be that Ronald John is a grandfather? <laughs> I don't no, think no, so. No. I think I think it was Ronald John the third or something like that. That was no, the... Ray Cooper's son. Oh, it's Ray, yeah, Ray yeah, Cooper. Yeah. Another He's one. There PFL you go. That, champion, yeah. And and there's another one that yep. uh was one of those guys. The only knock that you could really give the Hawaiian guys, and this is maybe not their fault. I I believe they would have flown off the island for fights at, at any given time because they were all rugged you know that way it's not like they were turning down fights or wanted to be hometown guys and stuff but for a you know mainland promoter to fly guys in from hawaii isn't cheap so right. um they didn't get that treatment back in the early days and, and that's one of the things that may very well have held them back so um you know until bj penn 
you know, went beyond that. And then, you know, obviously his family also helped fund that uh, because they had some money and that's good. Um, but some of these guys, like you said, from the projects and stuff, they, they may very well have been held back by the fact is uh, that it was expensive to get people off the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. So we have just watched Jens Pulver receiving Pauling, a classic from July 2004. Uh, Shudo, and uh, I want to thank Todd Atkins for selecting the fight. Great fight. And uh, for joining me along on the ride. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for watching. Take care.